friends, Steve Long here, and Sandra and I, and John Arnett, we are in London, and we're at the annual Spring Partners and Harvest Conference for Europe, and so we have pastors from our network all over Europe, and uh, England, uh, Scotland, Ireland, and we're having a great, great time. Last night, we had an aerobics instructor do three minutes of aerobics, and we had just a great, great time. And then tonight, John was preaching, and uh, he preached a brand new talk on father fatherlessness. It was amazing. This coming Friday night, we have Martin Smith with us, and Martin Smith is one of the um, best worship leaders from our generation. He's an English guy. He was the uh, lead singer in Delirious, wrote some amazing, amazing songs that we do, and uh, you are going to enjoy him. Hi, everyone. It's Martin Smith here, and I'm very, very excited to be coming to Toronto in May um, and visiting all of you. Uh, I'm very excited because I've got a lot of history uh, in Toronto because... Maybe 20 years ago, you know, I came over from England and uh, to visit the Toronto Airport Church and got really blessed, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and it's greatly impacted my life. So I, I'm very fond of Toronto and lots of friends there. So anyway, I'm coming soon and can't wait to see you all and uh, thanks very much. Cheers. So he's going to be one night with us this Friday at the airport campus and I want to encourage you to come. And later on in the, in the year we're going to be having a prophetic conference at the airport campus and at the Newmarket campus. And so it's going to be uh, midweek at the airport and weekend at Newmarket. Uh, Stacy Campbell's coming in, Bobby Connor's coming in, it's going to be a great, great time. We're going to be having Peter and Heather Jackson coming and doing a week about talking, uh, getting rid of shame issues. And uh, comes, shame comes with many, many cultures and so I want to encourage you that we're going to be dealing with that as well. Friends, one more thing to tell you about, and that is that we are going to be having, in the month of June, we're going to be having a financial reporting time at, uh, from, at six of the campuses. We're going to be having a time where you can ask questions about the finances of our church. Uh, we will have had our auditors, KPMG, have given us a report by that time. And so as soon as we get the KPMG report, we're going to be coming back with uh, how are we spending your money. And thank you for being uh, giving to our church and we're trying to be the best stewards and so we're going to be coming to all the campuses and just having a time sometimes uh, some of you it's going to be midweek some of you it's going to be a Sunday some it's going to be a Saturday and so we'll have a whole schedule of when that's going to be taking place that's it for this week on the screen right now all you need to know good morning church how are you all doing Okay, <laughs> why don't we stand up and worship together? I was asking God about this morning, about what he wanted to do in worship, and I got this picture of a champagne bottle, and uh, I felt like him saying that our most natural place in life as humans is to worship, right? That's what we're made for. It's what we were born to do. This is our eternal destiny is to worship, amen? How many of you want to worship for eternity? Yes, a few of you, good. <laughs> so um, I just felt this morning like God was saying, all we need to do is just shake ourselves up a little bit, just like that bottle of champagne, and the cork comes popping off, and the wine flows. So let's have fun this morning, shall we? this morning as we worship. Just find some space. You can move your body around. Savior, the King of 
have been seeing uh, angels, like angels posted here, and as many different people are seeing the same thing, like worship angels that the Lord is actually releasing, worship angels that are to be stationed here for what he's pouring out and what he wants to do. And I believe that he's coming with great healing and, and signs and wonders, but it's on the heels of worship. It's on the heels of us, you know, just getting a new level of adoration for him. Worship to the king. Oh. And I saw this morning, I, I felt like what I was seeing is like a release of dance. A release of dance that even uh, released some healing in our bodies and, and healing in our heart. Nancy just gave me a word too about healing in the heart. That he's still going deeper. He's going deeper in healing in our hearts. And I found myself remembering when Bill Johnson gave the testimony of when he was really going through a very difficult time and actually was quite depressed. But he would get alone with God and he would just begin to dance and he would begin to worship. Even when he didn't feel like it, he began to dance and he would dance in his home and he would worship and he would dance and he would worship. And it's like whatever it was just lifted right off of him. Oh. And you know that worship isn't just when you feel like worshiping. Worship isn't just when, you know, we corporately gather. But worship is something we do because he's worth it. He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our adoration. Oh. And when David, um, when David danced with all of his might, when he brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, he was dancing with an abandonment saying, I will be even more undignified than this. He was dancing because the glory of God was coming back in the house. It was coming back. And I feel like there's a whole new level of the glory and the presence of God that is coming back in the house. It's coming in a higher level. And it's time to dance. And it's time to worship. And I just feel like before we transition that we're to have another time of worship. I'm actually going to ask the dancers. I'm going to ask even school of ministry students. I want you to come up here. I want you to fill this place and even get into the aisles just for a moment here because it's like a sign of obedience. We worship because he's worthy. And if you don't feel like worshiping, that's the greatest time to start to worship because he's worthy. And I see that he's going to heal bodies. I, I see backs getting healed. I saw somebody with digestive problems getting healed. Even as you choose to worship. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm going to ask you to come up here right in the front. Let there be a release of worship. Let there be a new level of hunger. The Lord is releasing the worship angels. Worship him. He is worthy.
healing come. We declare healing in the bodies. Who needs a healing today? You need a healing, raise your hands. Let's, let's just do that word that Patricia had. Just take that dance, take that step, even if it's just that one foot, whatever it looks like. We declare a release of the power of God in this place. Lord, we dance upon sickness. We dance upon injustice. We dance upon disease. We declare in the name of Jesus, no more. We will not believe the lies of the enemy. We lay hold of your truth. We are aligned with the perfect will of our Father in heaven. Kingdom of heaven, come right now.
We worship the one who is worthy. We worship the one who is all powerful. We give you glory. We honor you. We exalt you. Jesus. I want you to wave like this if you feel something going on in your body, something's going on in your mind, or something is lifting off just all over the house. There's something in your back or you're just, wow, all over the room, all over the room. It's, it's sovereign. The day is coming when people walk through the door and they get healed. I've seen it in a vision. They walk through the door and they fall on their face and say, how can I get saved? They walk in and they're healed. It's like one big, long, continuous meeting not mattering who's on the stage God 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 is breaking through Tim tell us what happened so yeah last night in the school of ministry building uh, we had an amazing evening we had boys honoring so it was a time of the girls honoring the guys but after they had done the honoring we uh, we had uh, some of the interns doing worship and uh, it was just incredible we had three hours of complete Holy Spirit for worship every single moment was spontaneous they didn't have a single song planned before they came up and we were just dancing and just proclaiming it oh it was just amazing it was so good and Patricia didn't even know this when she was talking about the Holy Spirit coming in a new wave of worship and angels coming but we were all just away in it last night and it was just oh. pray for us Tim pray yeah, for yeah Holy Spirit we just release the spirit of worship right now Father yeah I want to thank you for the amazing things you're doing in this church and in this nation and all the other nations Father God we send out worshippers from this church settle right now in this church with your angels Father I want to thank you that this is a house of worship right now just keep building keep building bring wave after wave right now Papa yeah keep coming yeah wave after wave of worship touch each individual's heart in a new way Father I want to thank you that you're bringing freedom you're bringing healing with this wave of worship right now yeah bring it out bring it out bring it out yeah, amen and keep coming Holy Spirit keep coming throughout the whole meeting come and touch us instantaneously or gradually Lord they're both valid we welcome you I want to invite the name of choir to come to the stage. Those that were here on Friday night had an opportunity to enjoy the name of choir from Uganda. And these kids are, are orphans from an orphanage there. And they're doing a traveling tour in, in the region here in Ontario and possibly beyond. And they're going to just share two songs with us. And we're thrilled to be able to have them come. And even as, they, if, even as they make their way to the front, and I don't know if children's ministry has been released yet, but uh, you guys are welcome to stick around a little longer if you haven't. But then upstairs, they're going to do two songs with us, and then they're going to make their way upstairs. We've got Global TV. It's my understanding. I haven't seen them, but I understand they're here. That they're going to video them. And uh, it was a blessing. Who are he who's here on Friday night? Able to just partake and rejoice. You know, I, I get a picture of every tribe, tongue, and nation worshiping before the King of Glory. And so we get the opportunity to have a foretaste of what it's like to see that African nation, that Ugandan people be able to worship the Lord. And so in, con in uh, conversation with Daisy and Pastor Daniel from Uganda as well, and so we're going to just turn it over to these kids as they lead us in that, that next section. So we've got some microphones here all set up. And let this be part of your worship. You know, as we enjoy the Lord together, you might feel free to stay seated, but you're welcome to stand as well. So kids, whenever you're ready. Mark, can you roll that, uh, that CD, please?
Good job. Good job. Well done. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Wasn't that great? That just warm your hearts and take you in deeper, a whole new perspective on worship. Uh, they have a table. The name of choir from Uganda have a table out back, and they've got CD, at least one, maybe a couple there, and other materials. So if you're interested in uh, finding out more about them or even supporting them, purchasing a CD, you know, give away a few as gifts if you want. Uh, they'll be available at the back, and I know that would be a blessing to them. They're on their way up to the children's ministry right now or very shortly, so that'll be great too as they go up for, uh, for some taping with Global TV. Amen. Anyway, yeah, it's great. Let's give them another hand as they go up. Thank you, Name Acquire. Each one of you have in front of you, uh, in the seat pocket in front of you, you've got one of these cards. It's our Welcome to Catch the Fire Airport Campus visitor cards. And we would love it if you would just take a moment and give us a praise report, a testimony, maybe a prayer request of something that uh, the Lord has done or that you're looking for Him to do, and complete it on the back. But even especially if you're a newcomer, first-timer, uh, second time or regular attendee, just make a note of it. Just check it down and give us your name, updated address, and information. If there's anything you want to have information about, make a note of it. You know, the Lord has given each of us a testimony, and it's always good to make notice of that. And so we're going to receive the offering momentarily. And when we do, you can just drop this together with your, your tithes or your offerings into the bucket, and uh, that'll be a blessing. We collect these. We pray for them every Tuesday in the pastoral and in the house of prayer so we really do pay attention to that and it's awesome and also to read the praise reports so you know if you fill out a card two weeks ago then tell us what happened we want to welcome the mississauga campus online hi mississauga campus of catch the fire because they're joining us uh via the web stream to listen to our founding pastor john arnett speak today so that's awesome joseph and maria where are you i i know you were here earlier are they in the in the house Joseph and Maria are an incredible couple. If you're here, stand up. They uh, are, you'll see Maria a lot of times in the cafe. Joseph uh, runs the hot dog stand outside. They have been here for many, many, many years and have been so faithful. They are giving church family free hot dogs today. Whoa. And, and sausages. And sausages. And soft drinks. So they just say, they want to say thank you for the years of buying hot dogs and sausages and uh, and so they're just an amazing couple. So go out and join them. Uh, join the queue, as they would say in England, and grab yourself a free hot dog or sausage after the service. And Mississauga Campus, you're welcome to join in on that if you want to come our way afterwards. And I know Newmarket's going to join us today too, but I don't know if they're online yet. But fire in Newmarket and fire in Mississauga. We have, uh, we have a connection training coming up this Friday night for one hour, 7 o'clock sharp till 8 o'clock. For those that were here last week, I spoke on just the need for connections to really ingrain people into relationship both with the Lord and with ourselves. And so we are going to have a training in the speaker's lounge, 7 o'clock sharp on Friday night. And we would love for you to be there. There's a numerous different areas that we would uh, welcome you. And we really, we need you to help connect because we want to prepare for the harvest that's coming. And so after at 8 o'clock, we're going to join in on the Martin Smith uh, formerly of Delirious, and we're going to have an awesome worship time coming up. And then the Friday after that, we are having a special celebration. I'm not sure if she's watching online, hopefully not, but Carol Arnott is in Germany right now. She's coming home this week, but it is going to be her 70th birthday. Everybody say, I don't believe it. Uh, but it's going to be her 70th birthday, so Friday night, May 10th, come on out. We're going to celebrate Carol. Wouldn't that be awesome? Just to honor this matriarch of this house and of the faith. She was born on Mother's Day, so it's a very uh, prophetic thing God did because she's a mom uh, to the nations. And so let's celebrate Carol 70 years uh, on May the 10th on the Friday night. So come on out for the service at 730. We're going to have a, a bit of a program, cake, and just going to be a lot of fun. Okay, quick bullet announcement. Financial champions or prosperous soul, they're going to meet this afternoon, 2 o'clock, first session. Video announcements, for those that missed it, you can go online and please do read your bulletin because that's where you're going to find a lot of stuff. Kids camp and youth camp, two weeks this summer. Every parent say, hallelujah. <laughs> Okay, two different weeks. You can send them to both weeks, one in July, one in August, or to one of them. And there's even an in-house day camp 
in early July as well. There are forms now available. You can see Sandra and Ben at the front desk after church to sign your kid up. If you do, uh, there's a two-week deadline to get the early bird rate, okay? So it's going to be a phenomenal campsite just north of the city. Uh, so you can choose either week or go to both weeks and get, if you go both weeks for kids camp, I know you get the day camp free. So it's going to be just full-on Holy Spirit this summer. Come on. It's going to be amazing in August, too. Like, spend your summer in Toronto. Go tell your friends around the world. Spend your summer in Toronto. We have an incredible lineup in August. Mary Audrey, we have a women's conference uh, in August with uh, Julie Meyer, with Barbara Yoder. And we have a, a, a Ilsom International Leaders School of Ministry in there and another it, just incredible event. So check out the website. Go to the front desk, and you can sign up. And next Sunday, why is it significant? It's where we all start crying, but Darren and Daphne are going to have their last Sunday with us next week. Now, you know what we used to do in Stratford? Every month we would have a bring and share. We called them pot bless. Everybody would bring food, and we'd stay after church, and we'd eat together and hang out. We need to do it more here. What do you think? Would you guys bring food if we did it more often? I think we should do that. It's really, it, it fosters community, getting to know each other. But next week is that week, okay? So bring food. It is a good idea. Please do uh, let them know at the front desk or, or online or in Connect because we want to know how many tables to set out. But this is in celebration of Darren and Daphne, their promotion to be the lead pastors or the senior pastors of the Catch the Fire Calgary. And we're going to send them off with great blessings. So next Sunday, plan to stay, bring something to eat, crock pot or whatever. It's going to be an amazing time after church. And speaking about after church, we have our connection point going on again after church. And so I want to welcome you to join us, especially those that are new and you know, need to, don't really connect very well with people, into the connection point, which is the back cafe. And we got a great opportunity to connect with different of us there. And I know Patricia and I plan on getting in there at some point as well, just to yeah. say hi to you and and uh, you know, kind of make our faces known and greet you because we want to build that place of community in our midst. Yeah, tea, coffee, and just hang out right, right in that door right there. So that'd be awesome. We want to uh, pray for a few people in a moment, but first we want to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. Uh, and so we get our ushers prepared for that, please. And then, of course, you can drop your, your card in at the same point in time. Just a quick announcement first that uh, I know many of you were able to enjoy the seminar we had with Ian Ross, Father Heart Seminar. It was great this weekend. How many were here for that? Yeah, Ian was here, he said, and he's in Central tonight at 6 p.m. For those that are just hungry for more, you're on that roll and you want to keep going, so see them at Central Campus. But, you know, we want to receive our tithes and offerings um, this, this morning, and it's a great privilege to do this. And I want to tell briefly about my story in this regard. I remember at one stage, I thought, Lord, is this really what you've got for us, is to be giving this? And I thought, I want to examine the scriptures, because I feel like the Word of God is so crucial and so key. And so I remember examining the scriptures to see what they would say. And I recognized that giving our tithes and offerings, both our, especially our tithes in this case, was not just something that was in the law. I believe that God put it in the law because he so wanted to ensure that you were blessed, but he also had it before the law. It actually started, I believe there's a symbol of it, even in the Garden of Eden where God said, any tree you can eat from but this one, this is my tree. And that's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat of that tree. And I think that was almost like a pre-symbol to say that there's certain things that belong to God and they're holy unto the Lord and he wants them. But as we honor that, we will be blessed. Because how many know that if Adam and Eve had honored not eating that tree, we'd have been in a much better state today. And then Cain and Abel. You know, Cain, it says, brought an offering from the ground, an offering, but Abel brought the first fruits, the first fruits and the fat, it said, which means really, I believe, a tithe and an offering. The Lord was pleased with Abel, but not, sorry, with, um, with Abel, but not with Cain. And I think even there, there's, this, there's a recognition of the tithe and the offering. Now, why was God pleased with it? Because he wanted to release blessing on his people. God has a vested interest in your, your fruitfulness, your success, if I can put it that way. And so these are symbols. There's other ones as well. But these are symbols of where the tithe is actually pre-law. It was, it was in place before the law started. You see it with Abraham. You see it with Jacob. And so then we get into the law. God established it. He mandated it. You could actually go out there and take the tithe, as it were. The Levites could. Aren't you glad we don't do that today? You know, I'm thrilled to live in this generation, by the way, because God doesn't force us to do anything. You know, he doesn't force you. You don't have to tithe. You don't have to get saved. But how many people are glad you did? I mean, I'm really glad I got saved. I'm really glad I gave my heart to Jesus. 
And I'm also glad for the privilege of tithing because when I look back over my life, God has blessed me and us tremendously in the sake of the tithe. He really has. He's, I don't necessarily see every time the day in and the day out, but I look at the big picture and I see that the time of plenty is there. And I really picture it as a long-term commitment or covenant, as Carol described so aptly last week, that she really sees the tithe as the covenant. And even in covenant, somebody that acknowledges or that releases or initiates the covenant usually, and actually in most cases, gets the, ends up giving the most in the covenant. God initiated covenant with you. And how many know that as those that are recipients of that covenant, we get a really good deal? We kind of get his resources and he gets ours. I'd much rather get his. And now we're post-law, and I still recognize numerous scriptures in the New Testament post-law where God has actually initiated and released and advocated the tithe. You see it in Hebrews, you see it in Jesus, even when they held up the, the, uh, the coin. Whose coin is this? Trying to trick him. And he says, well, Caesar. Then render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, meaning your taxes, but unto God the things that are God's. What belongs to God? Now, one thing for sure is the tithe. It's his. And so today, I'm not going to ask you to give your tithes. I'm going to encourage you to return your tithes. But the beauty is you don't have to do it. Okay, so no pressure. God, God loves a cheerful giver. And so I notice that when I get into the place of cheerfulness, there's such a joy because I have a faith that I enter into his everlasting supply. And he releases it. And I walk by faith in it. And without faith, you can't please him. And I want to please him. I know I already do, but I want to continue to please him. And so this morning, you know, I just throw that out at you. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures to see if the things that you've heard are true this morning. Right? You don't have to be saved. You don't have to give your tithe. We live in a free country. But there's a great blessing in doing it, and I wouldn't want to be without it. So if we could have our, if we could have our, uh, our ushers come forward, checks can be made payable to catch the fire. And uh, if you want to give online, you can pull out your, your iPads or your, your smartphones and uh, go to Catch the Fire uh, ministries, I think I forgot the actual address again, sorry, but it's Catch the Fire, online giving, it's right there, there can be automatic debits even, because Patricia really heard the Lord clearly on numerous occasions talk about get technical with tithing, and so we've got the opportunity to ensure that this is something that aligns us perfectly with the will of God, you know, that we return it to Him, and, and the 10%, sorry, the 90% goes farther than the 100, and so you may want to do that, and uh, may, the, may the Lord give you cheer and great joy as you release your tithes and your offerings this morning. Amen. Can Ted and Sue Richards come up here to the front here, and PJ, we're just going to bless them and send them out. But while they come, anybody want to hear a cool story? We're about for a cool story. A quick cool story. Hear the story. It's a good story. School, uh, school of Men students, 16 of us. Where are you guys? I don't know if, if everybody's in the house, but we went with some of our house prayer team on the streets of Toronto this week, and we were just up here on Dixon and Kipling. And the Lord led us supernaturally uh, to, uh, I've never done this. I was actually nervous. Okay, I've done lots of prophetic evangelism, but haven't done a door-to-door -door thing. So God sent us to this door. He said, go to that house. So we're like, okay, knocking on the door, saying, hi, you know, we're Christians. We're from a church down the, uh, down the road. And the Lord gave us a word to this woman who answered the door, said, you're worried about a child. There's something about a child that's not well. Or, and she said, how did you know that? And we're like, well, we didn't know that, but God knew that. God knows everything about you. Now, she was a Hindu lady. She was kind of skeptical at first, but we began to just give the words God's giving us. She opened the door more and more. It was actually freezing that day. She kept opening the door. Long story short, she beckoned us to come inside. And as we came inside, um, her, I don't know who it was, a guy began to shout, say, what do you have? That, what, are you, what are they in this house? And he was very angry. And, and the, I was just like, oh God, what do we do now? What do we do now? And the Lord said, stand your ground. So we stood our ground, and this grandma beckoned us in, and there on the couch was a 14-year-old girl dying of cancer. And uh, anyways, <laughs> whew, I was a wreck after we left the house, but do you know that 14-year-old girl gave her life to Jesus that day? And um, that was on Wednesday. Anyways, and we really trust that she's going to be healed. The peace of God visibly came in the house. This man just kind of disappeared. The Holy Spirit came. This girl radically gets saved. The grandma was just so full of gratefulness. And uh, where's the Jonathan? I had closer in my CD or in my purse. I'm like, I'm, I don't know why I'm carrying around the CD in my purse. And God said, give them the CD closer. And the grandma said, I will play this every day in our home. And anyways, it was incredible. We walked in the streets. 17-year-old gave his life to Jesus. And so the world is hungry for the good news, church. The world is hungry. So 
Ted and Sue are, are heading out to Niagara. Where's PJ? You want to, he's here too. Just focus the camera in on these guys. Let's face the crowd here. Ted and Sue have been faithful and faithful and faithful and loyal and just really given of themselves in this place. And I know I've been part of Robin Carroll's Connect Group, Cell Group for many years, but they moved to Beamsville lately, recently, and uh, they're going to join our Niagara church plant, part of our new Niagara campus, and we want to bless them as they go. How many want to bless them as they go? I made them promise that, you know, they're going to come back at least to conferences or different other times because we love these guys. But uh, can we just have some of you extend a hand and some come around side and declare blessing? And we do bless you, Ted and Sue. You know, in Jesus' name, let there be a release of grace and glory. Lord, let them lay the framework and the foundation of your presence in Niagara Falls. We bless you to, to just be that evangelistic, even father and mother, to release the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven in Jesus' name. Bless them, Lord. Uh, John, why don't you come and get ready to come up? Is, is Bill Prankert in the house? We had heard that Bill was going to be here today, but I don't know if I see him. So Bill Prankert from Ottawa. Uh, so let's uh, give... And an Aaron, Aaron Brown. Where's Aaron? Aaron, are you here? Aaron, Aaron has interned with us for over two years. Run, Aaron. And Aaron front. is going to still hang out here at the church, but he's ending his internship this week. And so I think we need to give Aaron a big round of applause and clap. Amen. Thank you, Aaron, for your amazing service to us, your faithfulness, your loyalty, yeah. your being willing to dig deep. And Let's have all the interns that are here, interns and House of Prayer team, come and blast Aaron here. He's an amazing young man. We love Aaron. So we're going to still see Aaron, right, Aaron? Yeah. He's Aaron, Aaron might be involved in different other, different functions here, maybe youth. Youth, he's going to be involved in your youth, so that's a good thing, too. So let's just pray for him and bless him. Father, thank you for Aaron. Just everything he sowed, fill him back up, God, and give him many, many prosperous times in his new job, we pray, and blessings untold. Let's all stand for a moment. Just stand. Let's, let's welcome our founding pastor, incredible man of God, John Arnott, to the house. Oh, wow. Hey, thanks, everybody. It's great to be here with you all. And uh, I'm just sitting down there enjoying all that's going on here. Don't we have great campus pastors here at this, uh, at this place? John and Patricia, it is so good to have you two. You guys are amazing. And, uh, yeah, just a little update. We were in Germany for about three weeks, and then at Partners in Harvest, and England had a great time over there with Dan Slade and, of course, Stephen Sander were there also. And uh, there's just a growing family worldwide, everybody, that is uh, enjoying the Father's love and uh, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ all over the place. I think we have something like uh, 50 churches in the UK now, and that's kind of amazing. Just nudge your friend and say, that's amazing. <clears throat> okay, I want to talk to you about <clears throat> the fact that the truth will set you free. How many want to be free? Okay, what do you want to be free from? What do you want to be free to do? Yeah, we want to be free to love Jesus, but we want to be free from a number of things too. Uh, can you think of anything <clears throat> like sin, maybe? Okay, John 8, 32, that's the scripture. Jesus is saying, <clears throat> you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So turn to your friend and tell him that. The truth is going to set you free, my friend. <clears throat> Free from sin, free from fear, free from shame, free from pain, free from all that negativity, and free you into the Father's love so that you can get good and filled up with love, joy, peace, and all that good stuff. And I just felt it would be a worthwhile talk today to, to focus in on the fact that we are pulling the, the truth of God and the love of God together. It's not that we want one and not the other, but we want to have both and. And the reason for this is because 
on a, on a sort of a global scale, especially in the Western world, the, the old liberalism and the old heresies really, I find, are emerging again all over the place. And, you know, friends, I, I was shocked and undone last week when, uh, when I discovered that one, one of our pastors that we've walked with for many, many years in the UK was unable to sign now our statement of faith. And I love this guy, and, you know, he's a wonderful guy in many ways, but, you know, there's, how many are acquainted with our statement of faith? Uh, please get acquainted with it. It should be on our website somewhere. I got it off of our Partners in Harvest website. Um, maybe we need to move it up onto the front page and say, here it is. But see, there, there were two points uh, that he was having trouble with, and the first one is this. We believe that all mankind is lost in sin and needs to turn from it and trust personally in the Savior, Jesus Christ. All need to be born anew by the Holy Spirit's power into God's family. Now, wouldn't you think that's pretty fundamental? And yet the comeback is, but if, as in Adam, all die, and yet now in Christ all shall be made alive, so that negates the whole need to be born again, actually. You just, you're already saved, you're, you're you just need to become aware of it, that kind of talk. And I'm like, what? And the other one had to do with, uh, with hell. Now, hell's not a very popular topic around here. But, um, <laughs> but in our statement of faith, we say this. We believe in the resurrection of every person. How many believe in the resurrection? Wave at me. Okay to eternal life for the believer and eternal punishment for the unbeliever. And we give a number of scriptures to go along with that. And that was another one that, that he really couldn't sign because how could a God of love send anyone to hell? And so these are the questions that are confronting the body of Christ around the world. And I suspect that our people here are not immune to this kind of stuff, and it unsettles you. And uh, so, so some of the questions that are circulating are this. Is hell real, and is hell eternal? Now, that may not seem like an important question. Uh, it certainly is if you're headed for it. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the final judgment and all that sort of thing, that th there's more and more, you, you've hear, you hear terms like the emerging church, where this whole idea of universalism is pushed and promoted. And so the idea there is that God is so loving, once again, that even the devil will one day be reconciled to him and all that kind of talk. Now, the problem with that is that it is absolutely contrary to clear teaching of Scripture. Another one is this. Does salvation offer permissiveness? In other words, once you're saved, uh, you can do whatever you want to do, and, and God's cool with that because Jesus paid the price. And... Um, you know, that, once again, is sweeping, sweeping the church. <clears throat> I was with uh, Alan and A.J. Jones a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, and they were telling me about a young man in their church who, who said, you know, even if Jesus himself appeared to me, uh, I still would not stop sleeping with my girlfriend because I believe it's okay. So permissiveness, you see. And... Uh, Another one is this. Does the finished work of Christ mean no sanctification needed? No inner healing, no further ongoing work. I, I had a guy say to me one time in, when we were talking about getting your heart healed up and stuff, he said, oh, well, I believe in the finished work of Christ, brother. 
And I said, well, I do as well, but let me tell you something, you're not it. <laughs> and I wasn't trying to be smart, I was just trying to get his attention. Well, I was trying to be smart a bit, yeah. And this one's the clincher. The cross, the death of Christ, was unnecessary and unneeded. The penal substitute death of Christ, satisfying the wrath of an angry God, totally unnecessary. And so all of a sudden now, we're getting down to the root of it, aren't we? Is there anybody here that's heard this stuff like going around? Yeah. Let me tell you, it is sweeping our youth. It is sweeping our youth. And what do we do? Well, first of all, we need to say that the kingdom of God is a heart kingdom. It's a love kingdom. I am so happy about that. See, the, the primary trait of God the Father is he's loving and he is love. And uh, we want to be rooted and grounded in love, like Ephesians 4.15 says. But the challenging question, I suppose to all of us, is this. How do we put God's love and God's justice together? How does this work? So I want you to think about the nature of God just for a minute. Um... He is absolute perfection. Do you agree with that? All right, what, what is a perfect person like? See, a, a, per, a perfect person cannot compromise and kind of sweep stuff under the carpet, or he's no longer perfect anymore because his justice has been compromised. And so he has to deal with things that are wrong and sinful. For example, uh, I, was, I was listening to the Bible on the way in, and, I was, and it just happened to be from uh, the, the story of David and Bathsheba from um, 2 Samuel. And I was thinking this. How would... Uh, Bathsheba's husband feel once they get over into eternity if God forgave David but did nothing about the sin that happened to Uriah. How are these guys supposed to get along in all eternity? Yeah, you're the guy that stole my wife, got her pregnant, and had me killed. Now you imagine that going on for all eternity, and Uriah's question is, God, why didn't you do something about it? You see it? And because you forgave David, Father, and now you have a special place for David in eternity. He's sort of ruling in Israel, the king of the Jews, and alongside with Jesus somehow. But what about Uriah? Can you see the injustice that's done to the victim? And, and God cares about all that kind of stuff. He is compelled by his perfection and by his integrity to do something about it. And so the whole story goes how uh, Nathan the prophet comes and tells David this wonderful little story about a, a rich man who, who took someone else's only lamb and killed it for the traveler this visitor of lust that came knocking on the door and wouldn't take one of his own sheep, you know. And David said, he deserves to die. And Nathan said, yes, and you're the man. You're that man right there. Well, David repented and ran to the Lord, but you see there were, there were implications that followed now on down through his family. And that sowing and reaping began. See, God hates this kind of stuff. The thing that David did displeased the Lord. Now, when it comes to this whole idea of permissiveness, please don't come under deception on that thing. 
This church is a very loving place, a free place. We, we want a love church where come as you are and you'll be loved and all of that kind of thing. But make no mistake about it, God is going to do justly. And, uh, you know, hell is a very hard thing to explain to people. Because from our perspective, eternity is a very long time. But here's something that helps me. You and I have been rescued from a fallen race. John is clear in his, his teaching in, in the Gospel of John. He's saying, uh, he who does not believe is condemned already. They're already under that sentence of rejection. And see, God is not about to let uh, a few pollute the whole picture. For example, in your body, you are a collection of about 80 trillion cells, give or take a few. 80 trillion, that's a very, very, very big number, by the way. So have a look at yourself. Just hold your hand out and go, wow, 80 trillion, huh? That's amazing. And uh, I think it's every second about 100,000 new cells are created. So some die and some are created. But your body is a picture of the kingdom of heaven. Because all the cells in your body like one another. And they all get along. They all care for one another. And so if you cut your hand, then some go to work to, to stop the bleeding. Some deal with infection. Some create new cells. Some create scar tissue. Some carry debris away. Everyone goes to work to help sort out the problem. Isn't that great? That sounds like heaven, doesn't it? That's the kingdom. Kingdom of love. And you're a little model of it. But what happens when you get a group of cells that say, I don't care about the rest of you, I'm just going to grow and do my thing? What do you call that? Louder. Now, do you know what they do with cancer in the hospital? They cut it out and throw it into the incinerator. Now, you can say, wait a minute, that, that, those poor little cancer cells, they meant well. <laughs> How many here have had to deal with cancer at one time or another? I bet you didn't feel sorry for them at all when they cut them out, right? And so it is with the kingdom of God. Like, we are in a, in a gigantic plan of heaven to rescue fallen man on earth. And he is in the process of helping you and I decide which way do you want to go? Do you want to be a cancer cell, do your own thing, or do you want to be a part of a community that's based on love? You get to decide. And so the implications of this thing, you know, start to get pretty, pretty heavy. And so we want to have a balanced take on all of this now. And when I say balance, I want you to know balance is a very good word. Balance does not mean, you know, you sort of water down both sides of the issue so that you can have a nice, user-friendly kind of a place to be. No, no. Balance is very often embracing strong uh, extremes. And uh, it, it, a, lot of, a lot of scripture is like... Uh, a mystery. How, how can both be true? But you see, in the context of relationship, they often are. But we're called to embrace love and embrace justice strongly, like Jesus did. We're called to embrace grace and truth, just like Jesus did. It's not either or, but both and. How many of you really, really want to walk in the truth? Let's see. Wave excitedly. That would be me, Lord. Okay, well, heaven and hell, two extremes. Here's another one. Trust and obey. You know, that obedience thing, there, there's a lot of people never get that one worked out. That was King Saul's problem. He started out just like David did with a tremendous anointing. But he could never get the obedience part worked out. And when he blew it, he, he blame shifted rather than running back to the Lord and, and getting his own heart right and his own heart healed up. And so these kinds of things are 
being questioned and even attacked, if you will, um, in our world today, and it's taking a toll on a whole bunch of young people. That's why I'm speaking to it today. First off, the Bible is the Word of God. It doesn't just contain the Word of God. It is the Word of God from cover to cover. Even the parts you don't understand, even the parts you may not agree with yet, they are the inspired Word of God. And I think it's, it's almost worth taking a course to satisfy yourself to that. I, I don't have time this morning, but the historical accuracy of the Bible has been vindicated again and again, even though critics have said, no, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. No. It turns out that when you compare it with other literature, there it is again. The archaeological um, accuracy of the Bible, once again, proven time and time again. This book is truth. Then we have prophetic accuracy of this book, where hundreds of prophecies that have to do with the first coming of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus and many other peripheral ones, Israel becoming a nation again is one of the major ones in our day. They just had their 65th birthday over there. And a hundred years ago, the liberal church was saying it will never happen. But it did happen, didn't it? Because it's prophesied in this book. Now, you don't have to get quiet on me. You can shout or you can cheer or you can say amen or whatever. It's okay. 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Yeah? And is profitable for doctrine and reproof, and correction, and, in, and instruction. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Just nudge your friend, say, all Scripture. And when we start to take that one, now we begin to have a foundation underneath us. You see, if you, if you believe a lie that the Bible may contain uh, truth and inspiration, but I don't believe every word of it. Now, that makes you the, f the, the, the final judge about what, what you need to worry about, what, what you need, you know. It's, that's a very, very dangerous, slippery slope, friends. And what I want you to know is that the Word of God is absolutely the Word of God. And if you start to live your life by it, and read it, look in it, read it as though it were a mirror because it will not only show you the way forward, it will show you what you need to fix. How many find that helpful? Yeah. So God is a trinity, that's another one that people uh, attack. They really don't get how can three be one and all that sort of stuff. You know, I, I love the passage in Matthew 3.16 where Jesus is being baptized, and the Father speaks from heaven, and the Holy Spirit falls from heaven and lands upon him. We see all three manifested there in one scene. And so that, that's, that's amazing. But here's another one that's questioned. The divinity of Jesus Christ, is he really God? And is he the only way to God? I want you to see why he is the only way. Because he is God, and God comes to earth as a man and offers himself as a sacrifice to pay your debt and mine so that we now have a basis for this perfect God of integrity to forgive. Because he's like, my love is just longing to help you, but your sin has separated you from me. And now the Son of God comes and says, I will pay their debt with my life. You know, I just watched the, uh, the Bible again and the whole crucifixion uh, story part just last night. And it was just horrific what Jesus went through for you and for me. And to think there were people out there saying that this is totally unnecessary, that somehow or other 
the idea of sacrifice crept into the Hebrew nation and it went all the way to believing that the Son of God would die for us. You know, it, it is just such a master plan of God where justice and mercy meet at the cross. And so it is absolutely essential that you believe in Jesus if you expect to spend any time in heaven. And so he's clear in, in John chapter 14 that uh, where he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, tell your friend, no one comes unto the Father except through me. Now, people will say, well, that's a very, very narrow view. No, actually, it's a very, very generous view because he could have left us for destruction, kind of like Noah's world. But no, his love compels him to ask his only son, beautiful Jesus, who says, yes, I'm willing, and comes and pays our debt so that now the Father has a, has a foundation in justice and in integrity to forgive us. Turn to your friend and say, Jesus is the only way. And then the other thing is the cross. The cross is central. And uh, I suppose it's going to take us a few thousand years in eternity to really get to the bottom of what all happened at the cross. But the Lamb of God prophesied all through the Bible. Do you remember Adam and Eve? where he, he, he's saying that clothes made out of fig leaves won't do. We've got to get some animal skins here to cover you. Why? The symbolism is the innocent animal dies instead of the guilty man so that the guilty man can be covered and have a basis for forgiveness. Why would God accept that? Then we have the Passover. Of course, Abraham and Isaac and that sacrifice, but the Passover. Kill the lamb, put the blood on the doorpost of your house and on the lintel and on the two side posts. They actually make the sign of the cross doing it. And when I see the blood, he says, I will pass over you. My judgment will pass over you and my mercy will be extended to you. The, the Passover. Why would God accept an animal sacrifice? Because it's pointing prophetically to the day when the actual Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, will come. And now the Son of God will die in your place. And when you put his blood over the door of your heart, now you have a basis for forgiveness and judgment passes over you and that's just the beginning. That's the door that gets you in. But you know, if once, you're, once you're in, you find he wants to love you. He wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. He wants to bless your life and use you and invite you in as a son and a daughter of the king himself. I mean, it's, it's amazing. But see, without the cross, ladies and gentlemen, you and I would have no hope at all in, sacrifice, in, in pleasing someone who is so perfect in every way. Do you understand that? And so these, these heresies that are circulating around us, these are, these are very serious things because they have potential to take away a person's salvation. When you no longer think that the cross was necessary, you know what? You're no longer on your way to heaven, my friend. The cross is central. At the cross, perfect love and perfect integrity kissed each other. And now we see the fulfillment of scriptures like where the Father's speaking and saying, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So he's so loving, he'll stop at nothing to rescue you. 
He gave his only son. No compromise. The debt was paid in full. Turn to your friend and say, my debt was paid in full by Jesus Christ. It's no wonder we can shout and dance and worship because we've truly been saved. How many here have been saved? <clears throat> saved from what? Saved from judgment, saved from hell, saved from eternity lost. Oh my goodness. A couple of scriptures here that we probably should read quick. Um, Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and lewdness, idolatry and sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions and heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Is that plain enough? In other words, you're not going to carry on in sin as a Christian and inherit the kingdom of God. That's why sanctification is not just this nice option for those of you that want to be a little more spiritual people. This is... Uh, reflecting the intent of your heart. Are you trying to just work this thing so you can cut corners and get away with stuff and live a carnal lifestyle? Because if you are, he knows about it. He knows the thoughts and the intents of your heart. But on the other hand, if you're struggling with it and if you're saying, oh, God, help me, I'm going to go to that Father loves you weekend. I'm going to go and get my heart healed up, get a, get, do whatever I have to do. I've got to get free of this stuff because I so love him and appreciate what he did for me. And these things in my life are hurting him and grieving him. I want to get rid of them. That's the difference. It's the, it's the intent of your heart. Hebrews chapter 2, 1 to 3 is really asking the question, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Maybe, we, maybe we'll read that too. We must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. People, don't drift away. Life is not always easy. It's not always a walk in the park. It doesn't always go your way. I have a message that I need to bring here one day called the convoluted journey about why is everything so up and down and around and about and it's because God knows you do pretty good when everything's going your way and so he wants to find out how do you do when nothing's going your way have you ever had one of those weeks just make up your mind I'm gonna do well I'm gonna pass the test hallelujah the worst is is I could die or something we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proves steadfast, means true, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? What a great salvation. Don't neglect it. Don't play fast and loose with it. I think one of, our, one of our main problems is that we don't read the Bible much anymore. You know, Carol and I started reading the Bible with CBN, their daily Bible reading, uh, a number of years ago, and that was really helpful because it gets you reading it from cover to cover, from beginning to end. And now, lately, I started listening to it on Bible.is. How many listen to it on that? Like, it's great having someone 
read it to you while you're getting ready in the morning or driving in the car or whatever. Because, see, the, 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 the Word of God is life. It's, it's alive. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it knows how to keep you from deception and how to keep you kind of on the straight and narrow and how to keep you in love with him. So I want to appeal to you for your own sake, for your family's sake. Please get into the word of God and start to read it. I think we probably need to start some Bible study classes around here. I know we have some Bible study cell groups, but... <clears throat> 20 years ago, we were all well taught in, in the scripture, and, now, and then we had to give context to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that was going on. And so we've really, really stepped up to that and served that. But, you know, it's hard to uh, keep everything going, keep, you know, all the balls in the air and all the plates spinning, so to speak. And then when the minute you focus on something over here, you drop a plate over on this side maybe. And the Lord's saying, no, I want you to keep everything before you. It's truth and love and both together, not either or. I had an, a friend, uh, <clears throat> a mentor years ago uh, when I was a young Christian. He told me this. He says, you know, if you, if you simply uh, focus on the Bible and everything is the scripture for you, you'll dry up. And if you only go with the Holy Spirit and everything is the Spirit for you, you will blow up. But if you take the Word and the Spirit together, you will grow up. How many want to grow up? Yes. And we want to be like fruit of righteousness that he is really, 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 really pleased with. We want the Word and the Spirit. Let's all stand together. Get a hold of our statement of faith and take the trouble to study it. One of the things I just felt to worship to this morning was that old hymn, The Old Rugged Cross. How many remember that one? A guy named George Bernard wrote it. He was born in 1873 and died in 1958. How many were not even born in 1958 when this guy died? Yeah. God bless all you old people out there. Some of you were born. Anyway, it goes like this. <clears throat> On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. And then the chorus again. In that old rugged cross stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. To that old rugged cross I will ever be true. It's shame and reproach gladly bear. And then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share. I want you to cherish that old rugged cross, people. Cling to that old rugged cross. And you'll exchange it one day for a crown. Let's just pray together for a moment. If you feel like, John, actually, I've, I felt compromise kind of nipping at my heels and, and some of these questioning thoughts bombarding my life, 
especially when I was having a down day or whatever. Um, or maybe your children are asking you these same kinds of questions, and you don't know what to do. If that's you, just unashamedly hold your hand up high and say, you know what, I, I've, I've been concerned about some of these things. Anyone? Friends, I want to encourage you to hold steady, hold on tight. The truth will set you free. And the truth is that the God of love is perfect in every way, found a way to pay your debt and mine by Jesus willingly dying in our place. And that is so profound. And I'm thinking of the words of Jesus when he's about to be crucified. He's saying this, No man, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of myself. It's amazing in that video on the Bible, you know, the, the first scene was that Satan tempting him and say, hey, we don't have to go through all this stuff. I'll, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. They're all yours. All you have to do is bow down and worship me. Now, there's a shortcut right there. And Jesus says, no, that's not what we're going to do. Man will live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then later on, when he's so successful in Galilee, these thousands of people want to come mob him and make him a king by force. And he's saying, no, not this way either. It's not going to be the will of Satan. It's not going to be the will of man. We're going to do this thing God's way, the Father's way. And he chose the way of the cross. He chose, one could say, the difficult way. And yet it was the only way that would satisfy the integrity of a perfect person, God your Father, who is perfect in his love, but also perfect in his justice. That's why Jesus had to die. And he did it gladly, but he had to die so that you and I would have hope and have a basis for forgiveness. If you're here this morning and you have never surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe you've been wondering about some of these questions. Well, why is it that, why does he have to be the only way? Well, he's the only way because he's the only one who is actually God who came as a man. Virgin born, God his father, Mary his mother, the son of God. He came to the earth, lived a life, showed us how lovely God the Father is, what a God of love he is, how caring he is, and then became the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. It may be that you've been thinking, oh, well, I just make up my own mind about it. I believe some of it, but not all of it. My friend, you're just following your own ways then. You're just doing what's right in your own eyes. And you don't really have a foundation in truth. I want to encourage you to go by this book and this book alone when it comes to matters of doctrine. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, died for you and is willing to forgive all of your sins and give you new life if you'll really just humble yourself and get honest with him if you need a savior today that means you're aware of your own shortcomings and your own sinfulness God I have sinned I've hurt other people I'm in trouble with you. I owe you a great debt. And I have no way to repay you. Well, hey, I've got good news for you this morning. Jesus Christ will pay your debt simply for the asking. 
you come to him humble yourself and say god i have sinned i need help i need a savior i need jesus in my life and you invite him in and you mean it he will come in and wash you whiter than the snow he will write your name in the lamb's book of life and as far as the east is from the west so far he will remove your transgressions from you sometimes people get discouraged in church or trying to serve God they say I can't do this there's just too many problems I'm trying I'm praying I'm giving I'm reading I'm attending church I'm this that and the other friends you're just going through what all of us go through from time to time put your hand in the hand of God and walk through that valley come out the other side don't give up don't give up the truth will set you free because the truth is God is love if you're here this morning and you just told Jesus that you would like him to come into your heart and life and be your savior I want you unashamedly to just raise your hand so I can see it all over the room just wave at me so I can see where you are God bless you over here anyone else just wave at me God bless you at the back in this section anyone over here maybe you want to just nudge your friend and say hey do you uh, do you want to give your life to Jesus this morning see not only is it the smart thing to do it's the only thing to do actually if you know Jesus as Lord and Savior your life is already a success but if you don't know him however I don't care how successful you are you're in trouble and there's no life in you because he is the only way and we're gonna close in prayer but I I would like us all just to just to bow your head and recommit yourself to the Word of God to the truth of God to the to the Orthodox tenets of the Christian faith say God I'm in this thing for the long haul I'm yours Lord I, I gave my life to Jesus and I am totally 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 gonna serve you all my days through the good times through the bad times and all the in-between times I have found you Lord a friend who stays closer than a brother and your promises are yea and amen and time and time again your goodness uh, has overtaken me with blessing upon blessing if you raised your hand and said I, I want to surrender my life to Jesus today will you just step into the nearest aisle and make your way down here quickly even if there's only one or two of you way at the back come on yeah come on just stand right here it's a precious thing sometimes people think well John I've I've sinned but but it, but but what I did was so bad that I don't even think God can forgive me no you're the very one Jesus came for you're the very one he came for he didn't come to call the righteous he, he came to call the the sick the needy if you want him come on step out into the aisle and come on down here we want to pray with you because Jesus Christ the Son of God is the only way to eternal life thank you Lord Lord as as we just take a moment with these folks here we bless each and every one of you say it with me let's all pray this together but you guys especially dear Jesus I come to you this morning I admit I have sinned I've done many things wrong 
but I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose from the dead for me. And today I ask you, forgive my sins and come into my heart and be my Savior, my very own, for me. Thank you, Lord. From today on, I am a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, guys, can you just go with uh, our team? Just go over in the cafe and have a, have a coffee and a chat. That'll be great. And Father, I just bless each and every one of these people who are committed to your word, committed to your spirit, committed to your love. And we just want to say we are celebrating the greatest news and the greatest kingdom that is even in, in, unimaginable to think of something better than what you have given us. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. And I ask your peace and your shed blood to come and rest upon each one of us. And, and let us rejoice in the fact that our sins are really forgiven. Our debt is paid. We owe nothing to the justice of heaven. And so, Lord, with all of our heart, we want to go from here and fall in love with you more and more. And turn away from the things of the flesh that that would be contrary and cause us to sin and hurt others and call us more and more into your heart and your way of truth and your way of life that we can indeed be the people of God and indeed also be the bride of Christ in the name of Jesus amen give him a big shout of thanks for your salvation come on more you can do better than that yeah Jesus, wow, what a champion, what a savior. You did it, Lord. You really did it. All right, take it away, John. In a, in a closing song, let it be great. Um, am I giving it to you? That was amazing, John. Thank you. Let's give John a warm, good hand here. So good to get the foundation straight, to lay a good foundation. But... We want to bless you as you go. We are having our connection point that we can gather with, with those of you that just want to help connect, and it's in the back area, uh, the rear outer, outer cafe area. If you want to just come and worship and linger in, the house of prayer starts here at 1 o'clock until 3 o'clock, and tonight again from 7 to 9. I tell you, that house of prayer is a place where your spirit man comes alive, so if you can't avail yourself of it, we meet during the week as well. But let's just worship a little bit more right now and give God thanks for the great things that he's done for you and I. God bless you. Have a superb week. We look forward to seeing you throughout the week in our connect groups or Friday night again for Come Holy Spirit and our, our training that's going to be happening for connect leaders as well. Bless you. Grace strong.